when we teach our classes, we get asked this question a lot. Am I better off hiding in a room or am I better off getting out of the building altogether? Well, the simple answer is getting out of the building and away from the environment where the situation is your best option. The further away you can get, the better off you're going to be. However, that's not a cut and dry answer. You don't always have the luxury of just packing up and running out the door. It depends on where the shooter's at, where you're at in the building. You could be on the fifth floor, you could be in the basement, you could be in a closet, you could be in the bathroom, you could be in a lot of locations that are not going to allow you to just simply open the door and escape. So in a situation like that, you have to find an alternative means. Now I want to talk a little bit about when it is a good idea to stay and when it's not a good idea to stay. And like I just said a second ago, the scenario or the environment is going to dictate whether or not you stay or go. So for the first scenario, I want to talk about a schoolroom or a school in general. Now, in a school, students are already in place. They're in their classrooms. Um, there's usually 25, 35 students per classroom. Now, if an active shooter were to enter the building and come down the hallway and an alarm went off saying there's an intruder in the building, to have all those students get up out of their seats and run out into the hallway is just going to create more chaos. It's going to give the shooter an opportunity to basically go into that location and take out as many people as he or she would like. So having the children going into a hallway and trying to get out in that type of scenario is not your best option. Now, the majority of schools that are built are built out of concrete or cinder block. The entry doors to a classroom is generally or usually a fire rated door. The door is about an inch and three quarter inch thick solid core door with a fire rating on it. Now, is that door going to stop bullets? No, it's not. Is it going to slow things down? Yes, it is. If the school has a good locking mechanism on it, it's going to buy you time. That's what this whole thing is about, buying you time until the authorities can get there and take care of the threat and get everyone out as safe as possible. So as a teacher, you're responsible for 25 or 30 students, however many students you have in your class. Like I said, to shuffle all those kids out in the hallway in an orderly fashion while somebody's shooting and get them out safely is not an option. So you're going to have to barricade yourself inside of your classroom. Again, your classroom is made up of cinder block and concrete. That's giving you a level of protection. It's not giving you the ultimate level of protection, but it's giving you a level of protection. It's the best option that you have right now. We've all been taught active shooter. We know close the door, lock the door, turn the lights out, pull the shades, put uh, a shade over the door glass and everyone huddle in the corner. That all stands true. Nothing's changed with that. That is your best option for that scenario. Keep everyone quiet and try to maintain calm. That's all you can do at this point and you have to wait for the authorities to get there. Now, let's say you're at a sporting event at the same school and all the students are in the bleachers and they're watching a football game and a shooter comes onto the field and he or she decides that they're going to start shooting. Staying in the bleachers or huddling underneath the bleachers is not an option. It does not provide any cover for you or your students. Before this takes place, you need to have a plan in place. When you go outside to these sporting events, you should be looking around saying, okay, if something bad were to happen, where can I take my students to keep them as safe as possible? Again, huddling underneath the bleachers or staying put is not an option. Look around at the environment. Is there a wooded area where you're at? 
Is there maybe a maintenance shed? Is there a parking lot close by where you can hide behind cars? Can you get back to the school or if not the school on the other side of the school? You have, is there houses in the area? Is there a neighborhood? Whatever you need to do, make a plan. If something were like this were to happen, you can get your students to that location as quickly and as safely as possible. So that's a scenario where hiding or huddling in a room or location is not a good option. Now let's take a school out of it and let's talk about an office building. So you work in an office. An office normally doesn't have cinder block walls or concrete walls. Most commercial buildings, the interior is made up of metal studs and drywall. They're partition walls. They're basically there just to partition off offices. They're not there to provide any level of protection, just a level of privacy. As an adult who's not responsible for anyone else in your office, it's your responsibility to have a plan to get yourself out of there. Now, if this is a healthcare facility and you have patients and things like that, um, then there's different options that you need to consider. But for this scenario, if it's just you in your office and you need to protect yourself, you have to come up with a plan. Do I stay in here or do I get out of here? If you're in a situation in your office and there's an active shooter down the hallway, you have got to worry about yourself. You have got to get yourself out of there. Now, you can hide in the filing room. You can hide under your desk. You can hide behind a water cooler or whatever. How much protection is that going to give you? You have to ask yourself that. Am I being protected from bullets or am I concealing myself from being discovered? You have to make the decision. Can I get out safely? Do I hear the gunshots all the way at the other end of the uh, building and I can safely escape out a window or I can safely escape out another exit? You have to make that decision. Am I better off staying put, hiding behind the copier? Again, it's a decision that you're going to have to make at that split second. I can't tell you, yeah, if you stay in your class, or excuse me, if you stay in your office, you're going to be fine. It doesn't work that way. I, I, want, to, I want to touch a little bit about a police response. People have the misconception that when you call the police department, they're at your door instantaneously. Mm -mm. That's not the case. Think about this for a second. How much time do you need to get ready in the morning? Or how much time do you need to go from your kitchen to your car? A couple of minutes, whatever, an hour, I don't know. Think about a police response for a second. An active shooter comes into your building, okay? You are already in a reactive state. You're in that building, we'll go back to the school, teaching class, having a meeting, having lunch, preparing for your next class, whatever. The last thing you're thinking about is somebody coming in that building with a gun. You're going about your day. Now all of a sudden the bad guy comes walking in the building. You start shooting up. Now, first of all, you have to process that. That's gonna take a few seconds. Hopefully, someone else hears it and gets on their phone and calls 911. That takes time. The call the 911 goes in, they have to answer the call and start processing it. That takes time. After they're processing the call, they have to dispatch it. While they're processing the call, they dispatch it to a unit or two. They have to process it. Now they have to start responding. So now let's take this scenario. You live in a small town. The jurisdiction where I worked, we would have anywhere from 15 to 20 officers work in the street. We were pretty fortunate. Our response time was anywhere from two to four minutes, which was pretty good. That's still four minutes. Imagine how many people can be killed in four minutes, a lot. So let's say you work, or excuse me, you live in a small town and there's only two or three police officers working that day. That's it. 
and they're on the other side of town dealing with a domestic disturbance. And it's a serious domestic disturbance. They have to have an arrest or make an arrest. Now the call comes in. Now they have to evaluate, are they going to leave this job? Or are they going to go to the active shooter? Let's say they leave and they go to the active shooter. Now they have to respond there. How long is that going to take? How far across town are they? Is it going to take a minute? Is it going to take 10 minutes? You don't know. Okay? It's time. Everything is time sensitive. So what are you going to do for yourself while this is taking place? You have to survive on your own. You can't rely on the police to be there to save the day. They will get there. And even when they get there, there's still time that has to be um, allotted for. They have to arrive on location. They have to enter the building. Now they have to determine blindly where the shooter is. Is the shooter down the hallway? Am I hearing gunshots? Okay, I'm hearing gunshots. So I know that the shooter's in that direction. So the officer or officer start heading in that direction towards the gunshots, okay? They're going as fast as they possibly can to get there. Now the gunshot stops. Now what? Now they have to slow the roll and they have to start looking. Where's the suspect? They have to do not methodical searches, but quick searches to make sure that the suspect's not flanking them and is going to ambush them. And they have to say, okay, well, the last known location it was in that direction. Now all of a sudden gunshots start ringing out again. Now they're coming from that direction. So the suspect went from this side of the building to this side of the building. Now they have to redirect. So it's almost like a cat and mouse game. They're, they're trying to blindly find the suspect based on sound. That all takes time. Once they find the suspect and they eliminate the threat, then okay, we're good. We can slow things down a little bit. We can start getting assistance and help to the people that need it. But in the meantime, you have to take care of yourself. You have to have a plan in place. Do I stay here or do I go? Again, no one can make that decision except for you. So I hope that this shines a little bit of light and, and gets people thinking a little bit. Um, if you have any thoughts or questions, you can go on our website, uh, Real Talk LEO, and you can um, email us or you can call us or whatever you want to do, or you can leave a comment uh, at the end of this video and we'll get back to you. We're here to help people, okay? We want to make sure that people get through a situation like this, if it ever happens. So, with that being said, I hope you got something out of it, and please stay safe and have a great day. Thanks.